The controller that we're installing today is the Red Arc Topro Elite V2, and uh, we're also going to be using the Topro Switch Insert for our Lexus LX470, uh, and then we're also going to install an inline 30 amp fuse just to keep everything protected. This is the uh, four pin wiring harness that comes with the Topro V2. Uh, this just plugs right into the back of the unit. So we're going to have to do a hard wire. And so I've gone ahead and I've uh, attached two um, 20 foot leads to um, our positive battery uh, lead. And then this is the actual trailer brake lead that will run to the rear of the vehicle. So we'll put this through to the engine compartment and then we'll pass this one through uh, to the rear of the vehicle. Before we do anything else, we're just going to do a quick continuity test, make sure that our connections are good. So this is the trailer brake connector. Got the negative here on our lead, and then the red, and it should connect to the pin and make a quick beep. Perfect. Now we'll do the positive on the power supply from the battery and just right here on our other lead. That's what we're looking for. Now we're going to run a snake through the firewall grommet in the LX470 and we'll pull the battery terminal connector through that way and then we'll put a ring connector and our inline fuse on. So let's go do that now. Right up. Floor mats out. Rotate it up and back. Now let's see what we're working with. Right in there. That's where we're gonna connect up for our brake signal. And uh, we're also gonna run a wire up to the engine compartment through that grommet right up in there. So we'll pop the hood and run one through that little grommet. So now we're gonna run a positive lead over to here. So we punched a whole new hole in the grommet right there. And uh, the way we did that was we just took a drill from the inside so that we could see where nothing was uh, being ported. And we just punched a little hole and then we'll come back through with some silicone and uh, re-waterproof that area. And then this little green thing is just a uh, small electrical snake for bringing the uh, positive lead wire back through. So let's go do that now. Grab it. Just pull it through. So here we have our wiring harness and we want the end that's connected to the black cable. It says battery positive on it, in case you are, forgot. Um, we're gonna run that along with our snake through the, the grommet here in the engine bay. Attach it to our snake. Come back here. And we'll electrical tape that on and pull it back through. And I tend to overdo this because I only want to do it once. Go all the way down, cover the end, and I'll come back. And kind of just go over this connector. And we'll call that good. Okay, now we'll pull it through the end of the uh, firewall and connect it up to the inline fuse. Here we go. Bring it through. There we go. Before we go any further, we're gonna disconnect the negative battery terminal. Take our inline fuse. Get a bit of 
shrink wrap. So inline fuse. Strip back the insulation on the fuse. About the same amount. This is a lighter gauge wire, so we're going to be very careful not to actually clip the conductors. Put our heat shrink on. Separate this into two bundles. Of, twist each bundle of conductors like this. So it should make a 90 degree angle. Do the same thing over on our inline fuse. Then we will take them in opposing directions and wrap the side bundles around the vertical bundles. So your first set wraps both and then you fold what's left over of the vertical bundle down, wrap the other side bundle around, and then fold the other vertical bundle. And this is a very strong splice. It will not come disconnected. We'll put that roughly in the center of our heat, sink, heat shrink. And then we'll use our handy dandy lighter here to uh, heat shrink it all together. And you might wonder about this little case on the lighter. It's very cool. It's got a piece of hemp, uh, waxed hemp that kind of wraps around here and acts like a fuse. So you don't have to waste all of your fuel on this, it just burns the hemp like a wick. So really like this for this application. Thanks to my friend JJ at Bearcat Overland for hooking me up with this. It's from Hemp Lights. Check them out. So just light that up. Shrink wrap this. I'm just gonna come like this. Again, remove the insulation. So now we're going to remove a little less insulation and use a ring terminal. Use the yellow ring terminal. a little more heat shrink on this but we don't need a whole sleeve so we'll just cut it down to size slip it onto there and I know somebody in the comments is gonna say that's not how you do it you use a crimper well I don't know where my crimper is so we're gonna use channel locks to crimp this down but uh, if you think I did it the wrong way comment and tell me how you would have done it better There we go. That's about as good as we are gonna get, I think. Nice and crimpy. And then we'll follow that up with a little shrink wrap here. There we go. Looks good. Kind of route this where we want it to go. Should have done that first, but oh well. Okay, nice and snug. And now we'll pop in our big fuse, just like that. Close her up. Okay, we'll get some silicone. Okay, now we've got our positive battery connector run. 
we are going to do the next step and that is to run our our uh, brake power all the way to the rear of the vehicle so okay so while I was off camera my battery died and uh, so I did a couple things while it's charging and I'll show you what those were now all right so here you can see a put a uh, vampire clip in, a uh, vampire connector. Uh, I've attached it to this pin here, which is green and white. And uh, that's our uh, brake pedal, uh, our brake light trigger wire. So it's the red from the Red Arc four pin uh, harness. And then it vampire clips into this green and white cable here. That's the third pin over just here under the uh, the foot well. And I also went ahead and ran a dedicated 12 volt wire straight back from the battery. I'm gonna vampire clip that into the one that we ran through the grommets in the engine compartment. And I ran that and the trailer brake signal carrier, so the blue wire, all the way back to the back of the vehicle. You can see from the messed up carpeting, I've run the wire under the carpet here to about right here. There's a plastic plug uh, that I just drilled a little hole through and fed both the 12 volt wire and the uh, trailer brake wire through. I've dropped them down through here underneath the uh, driver's side of the vehicle um, and connected them up here to our seven pin harness. This is the black 12 volt accessory uh, power or auxiliary power. And this is the blue um, trailer brake signal wire here. And then we just hooked them up here to the seven pin plug. And uh, this is the reverse light, uh, which I'll uh, install a trigger wire from the reverse light on the vehicle. Too. All right, so we've vampire clipped the uh, 12 volt auxiliary send cable to the 12 volt that's coming in from the grommet in the uh, firewall. And those both connect up here to the four pin harness for the brake controller. Now we're gonna take this ring connector and hook it up to our ground wire and crimp it. So we'll put our crimpers there, crimping tool, which I did find by the way. And we'll just crimp that nice and tight. We chose this screw here, which is the dash support. Uh, we're just gonna Screw that right in and uh, put our ring terminal on that guy right there. And we're almost there. All right, so now we're grounded. Okay, so it's day two on the install and I've learned a couple things. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the remote head onto the control panel at the left hand side of the steering wheel. So first thing you want to go ahead and put this trim from Red Arc. You want to go ahead and put that in the housing here uh, and then bring the remote head in from the back side because if you try to insert the whole assembly from the front this uh, back end is too wide to actually fit through that opening. So. Um, we're gonna line up the little optic, fiber optic cylinder there at the top at the 12 o'clock position and match it up with this little hole right here in the switch housing. And just because it's easier at this point than later on, go ahead and uh, put the ethernet connector or RJ45 connector 
into the back of the remote head before you secure it to the switch and have to fish down behind there to find the RJ45. Our RJ45 connector here run up from the brake controller already. So I just found that it fit better to use the straight connector up on this end and the 90 degree below. So go ahead and connect these up here. All right, here's something else I learned. Uh, you can put this little gray bezel here and hang it there and try to do the nut, but it's just much easier to just go ahead and seat them in your hand and then just twist it on like that. Just because that little gray thing likes to fall off and get lost and you spend a lot of time looking for it. So take that little tip from me to tighten it up. We're gonna use a uh, 12 millimeter socket on a little three inch extension. This one's a wobble extension, but doesn't have to be. It was just the first thing I grabbed. So we'll just tighten that down, making sure that our bezel stays in the same place. We want that little notch to be at the 12 o'clock position. And there you go. Okay, now the piece we've all been wanting to put on the whole time. So what we're going to do here is we're going to turn this as far clockwise as it will go. Okay. Which means that needs to be with the number 10 at the 12 o'clock position to align with our little LED. Perfect. And now we'll just make sure that it lines up with zero as the far as counterclock point, and it does. And that just about does it. So let's go ahead and button up the trim and call good. And make sure these little tabs here align with their holes. A little tap on the left. And there is one screw down here that needs to be reinserted. And right there. I put this conduit on to the wires that come out of the four pin connector just to keep things tidy under here. The controller, I actually put it on the back side of the duct that opens up kind of uh, right below the steering wheel. And I attached it with a uh, Gorilla uh, double stick gel tape. And there you have a nice clean install of the Red Arc Tow Pro Elite trailer brake controller. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the comment below. As always, I uh, appreciate a like and a subscribe. It helps. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the comment below. As always, I appreciate a like and a subscribe. It helps us reach a larger audience. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.